Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me here. Now, are you living a life that you love? Are you living your soul's purpose? Are you following it? And if there was a sure bet formula that you could find and implement in your life right now to follow your passions, would you use it? Well, stay tuned because the guest today is going to talk to us just about that. She's going to share her insights into fully living a life that you love. Welcome to Creative Visions TV. I'm your host, Karen Dahlman, and I'm excited to introduce this guest to you. Let me tell you a little bit more about her before I bring her on. She was born and raised in Hawaii with quite a few siblings and later moved to Seattle where she attended college. She's a 36-year entrepreneur, best-selling author, angel investor, and philanthropist. She has served as a board member on many different professional and business groups, and she's also an international speaker. She's been featured on TV talk shows, she's in, on radio, she's also in print and online magazines. You can find her pretty much anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> she's a wonderful speaker, and she also has helped many companies uh, build their success. In fact, she has helped start and grow eight successful companies in as large as $100 million in revenue. Yes, I said $100 million in revenue. So you ask, what is the key to her success? Well, we're definitely gonna explore that today with my guest. Yet, let's just say this, she applies spiritual principles and tools into all of her ventures, including her own life. We'll get into this a lot deeper. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So. Listen, her goal and her passion now is to share this tried and true knowledge with other people so they too can experience loving their life. So she believes that everyone can have this experience. She has two books she wrote, and if you know these books, you know who she is. One is called The Path to Wealth. It's the seven spiritual steps for financial abundance. Her most recent book is The Gratitude Formula, a seven-step success system to create a life that you love. So just from the titles alone, you can see why I'm having her on this show. Many of you write to me and ask, how do I find my purpose? How do I perceive it, pursue that? I can't, I don't have any money. And so we're gonna talk about all this stuff, about abundance and prosperities and purpose and everything that helps build that in your life. So without further ado, I'd love to welcome May McCarthy to the show. Welcome, May. So happy that you're here with us. Oh, thank you for having me, Karen. Well, it's definitely a joy and a pleasure to have you. Um, you guys, this woman, <laughs> this business lady has so much to share. I'm really uh, amazed at all the stuff she's been doing. Um, anyway, let's get right down to brass tacks. So what is it that got you into doing all this business work and getting successful, very successful with it? Well, you, you know, my, my background as the last of 10 children, Growing up on the beach in Hawaii, my parents, I mean, imagine raising 10 kids and the cost of doing that. So they put forth a lot of effort and a lot of expense for all of our basic needs. But they taught us at a pretty young age that what we needed to do was to facilitate a fair exchange of value with other people if we wanted anything more. And what that meant was we needed to look for opportunities, places where people were having problems that needed to be solved, or maybe they had opportunities to enjoy a convenience, you know, maybe we could save them some time or some energy, and they would give us money in return. So I remember as early as six years old, recognizing that my brothers were going around the neighborhood and offering to mow lawns and cut hedges and wash cars. And, and that they were facilitating this fair exchange of value. And I thought, well, I want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I saw that everybody that was out on the beach at the end of our street looked hot because we didn't have any public facilities, you know, it was a private beach. And so I mentioned to my mother, I think I could facilitate a, a fair exchange of value. I think I could give them something cold to drink or something <laughs> That some refreshment and they could give me money in return and she said well let's give that a try so my mom taught me about this idea of you've got a cost and then you have to price what you're gonna sell a little higher so that you can make a profit and grow your business and it was a wonderful lesson to learn and then I trained all my family members to take the quarters and the 15 cents <laughs> and and things like that and put it in a giant mayonnaise jar <laughs> 
The thing that I learned, however, that she didn't warn me about was this idea of inventory shrinkage. And mm-hmm. those were the products that I lost to my brothers and their friends who would eat them for free. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to adjust my pricing to accommodate for inventory <laughs> shrinkage. Wow. And from there, from there, I just continued to always make sure that whatever I was going to do um, to earn money facilitated a fair exchange of value. And I, I actually support and mentor lots and lots of entrepreneurs. And one of the things that I ask them to make sure that they're doing when they're creating a business is that they have clearly identified what problem they're solving Mm. or what convenience they're creating and that they're passionate about it. If they're getting into business just to make money, that's not a good reason. (laughs) If they're getting into business to solve a problem, create a convenience, and if it's in alignment with their purpose, the why that they're here, they're going to be so much more motivated and so much more passionate and so much more creative and innovative to be successful. And I'm I'm really blessed and fortunate to have had opportunities that have showed up that allowed me to live from my purpose. My purpose has been the same since I was about 12. And that is that I am here. The reason I'm here is to bless others and to be blessed. And all of my businesses have had a variation of that. As an author and a speaker, my purpose is to elevate prosperity and freedom for all and to be elevated and prosperous. You see how that's to be a blessing and to be blessed. It's a win-win so, when you work that it way. Is. It is. So that's that's where it came from and that's where I continue to operate from. And I tell you, I just, I love my life and I never know where I'm going to be directed yet, you know, in 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 life in terms of opportunity but my goal every day is that i am using my skills and talents in remarkable ways to bless others and to be blessed i I love what you're talking about here so for the audience purpose um let's say uh, you guys out there is somebody saying um i still don't know my purpose i don't know what i'm supposed to be doing i don't look forward to getting up every morning going to my same old everyday job or it's not the job for me what would you say to them as as a way to spark that excitement to find in their life again well if to find their personal purpose there's really just three questions that they want to answer and they Everybody want to listen some, up now here we go they want to spend some time answering these yes the first question is what did i do when i was a little kid that I just lost hours doing. I had so much fun doing. And I lost hours and I just, I just loved it. I have a friend of mine who is a CIO, a chief information officer. And when he was a little kid, he loved to take apart telephones and, and mm-hmm. small electronics and, and really understand how they all worked and put them back together. And, and when vendors would come over to his house, you know, painters and plumbers and people to fix things for his parents. He would job shadow them and he would really discover what the plumber was doing and how everything worked together. And then as he got older, like a teenager, when there was a problem, he could figure out how to fix it and he'd get all this praise and mm-hmm. and, and adoration from his parents and family uh, for fixing things. I mean, he just loved doing that. He loved doing that. And um, the second question is to ask yourself, what have other people told you you're good at doing? Hmm. I have a friend of mine whose name is Susan, and people have told her that she is incredible at helping others to reveal truth. She's the person you go to when you're when you feel like you're really struggling with something and or or something's going on and and you just need to talk it out with someone. I mean, she's a great listener and she's always a champion for you. She's the one that that really wants to to help you and she asks you questions and by the time you're ready to leave, you figured out what the solution is. Oh, nice. She's at- She's asked you all these questions and you've come up with your own solution and she's so excited for you and she's like the greatest cheerleader. So what if other people told you you're good at doing? And then the third question is, what do you think you're good at doing? What do you think you're really good at doing? What skills and talents do you use that you think you're just, you just love doing that? I mean, for me, 
I love taking complicated ideas and turning them into really easy to understand and implement principles. Mm -hmm. I've led technology companies and most technology industries have all sorts of acronyms yes, and they've got yes. all sorts of terminology that make no sense. And what I've always thought is there should, I, I, I always go into an uh, industry and think there's somebody's grandmother sitting in the corner of every meeting room. And we have, to, and they know, that grandmother knows nothing about the industry. And we have to be able to convey and speak in such a manner that that grandmother can understand everything perfectly clear. Mm -hmm. And I've carried that with me through my entire work career and have this knack of taking complicated ideas and putting them into really easy to understand and implement processes. So that's what I think I'm good at doing. So if you answer all three of those questions, you'll start to create some common phrases that come from each of those answers. Like for my friend, the CIO, he loved taking apart electronics and other people have told him that he's really great at making people's lives easier through helping them understand technology. And so what he thought he was great at doing was essentially making other people's lives easier, solving problems through his understanding of technology. So his purpose is to solve problems and make people's lives easier. Purpose doesn't have to be anything complicated, but it comes from seeing that what's common in all three of those answers. What did you do when you were a little kid that you absolutely loved and lost hours? What have other people told you you're good at doing? What do you think you're good at doing? And then find those commonalities in all three answers and start to play with the phrases and the words until you come up with something. It doesn't have to be complicated. It could be really simple. I am here. The why that I'm here is to bless others and to be blessed, to make life, people's lives easier uh, through understanding of technology. Doesn't so have to be it, it, that's great advice. I love those three steps. What happens if somebody says to you, "Well, I'm in a job. I, I'm just, I, I'm just making ends meet. I've got to pay mm -hmm. my bills, take care of the children. I, I don't have time for my purpose." <laughs> I've heard that. So, what, what would you say to that? Well, I, I would say that if, if you're happy in your job, great. But if you really don't like your job, then start to use the formula, this daily practice that I write about in my books. Start to look at your goals every single day, like your goal for having a really satisfying and fulfilling and exciting job where you're rewarded with X number of dollars per month or year to use and enjoy, to bless others with, to invest and increase, where you feel valued and appreciated by your company and where you value and appreciate everyone that works with your company, all your coworkers, your customers, your bosses, your investors, your community and your world. Start writing out every single day mm -hmm. to program your brain for success what you want your life to be like. Now show up at work every single day as though you work for a higher and more creative boss. You know, this all-knowing power of the universe. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not working for the man or the woman. You're working in excellence for something greater than yourself. Show up in excellence every day, but meanwhile, continue to write out what your goals are and you will find that your subconscious and your intuition are gonna pop up to show you opportunities to make those statements true. I talk about in my book, lots of stories about people in almost miraculous ways getting new job offers in, in unexpected ways. One guy ended up, his bus, that was taking him home after work broke down. So he's walking along and this uh, sign that he had noticed <laughs> just sort of sparkling um, just seemed to be throbbing and he walked into the business and said, what do you guys do? While he's talking to the receptionist, the boss comes out from behind to get something from the receptionist, starts up a conversation with this guy, 
offers to interview him for a job and he gets a new job with higher pay, more responsibility, and works with a whole new group of people that he absolutely loves. Oh, I love it. That's, syn- that's synchronicity. That's, that's awesome. Synchronicity does happen. It's, it, how do you get yourself in the flow of that, allowing these goals to unfold and, and be in the flow like this gentleman was when the bus broke down? He made the best of it. Right. So when you wake up every single morning, do not let the world tell you what's important to focus on. You figure out what's important to focus on first. What happens with our subconscious and our intuition is whatever we decide is important, it will go throughout the day and filter all of this data and illuminate possibilities for us to take steps that are in alignment with whatever we programmed our brain with. So program your brain first thing in the morning with the goals that you want to achieve. So set your alarm, maybe 25 minutes before you normally get up and sit quietly in some sort of meeting space in your home. This is where you and that creative intelligence of the universe is going to, you're going to sit there and program your brain for success. The way you do that is you read something for maybe five minutes that's inspirational and uplifting. Maybe stories about other people receiving the same kind of success that you want. Once you start to get familiar with those stories, your subconscious is going to say, wow, if they could have that, I could have that. If they could have a fulfilling and wonderful job with a bunch of money and lots of fun with coworkers, I could have that. You start to make it familiar and welcome. The second step is to write out a gratitude letter. Mm. Gratitude magnetizes you to achieve whatever it is that you're putting your attention on. So you would say, I'm so grateful that I am now in a job that I absolutely love where I get to use my skills and talents in fulfilling and satisfying ways where I am rewarded financially um, with more than I ever expected. And I get to work with people who I really value and appreciate and I feel valued and appreciated. I love my job. Then you you write out, I'm so grateful that I have harmonious relationships with my family and my friends and my community. I'm so grateful that I'm physically fit, trim, toned, energetic, and a healthy, pain-free body that's easily able to move through life. I'm so grateful that I have a deep spiritual connection to my source, and I always make right decisions quickly. So whatever your goals are, you write them down as though they're complete with gratitude. What will happen? is your subconscious and your intuition are going to look out over all this data and make you not notice stuff that's not in alignment with what you want. And you all have proved this. Think about the last time that you were going to buy a car. Maybe you're like most people. You think about a car. Okay, I need a new car. And maybe you research and you narrow down the models and you know to one or two models and you talk to your friends and your family about it. Maybe you even go and test drive the car, right? Don't you start to notice that car driving around everywhere? You never noticed that car before. And now it's almost like that car is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Your subconscious helped you notice that because it was something you were focusing on. You can do this for any goal. Then what happens is your intuition shows up through gut instincts, strong thoughts, ideas, messages from other people, hunches, awareness, maybe even a sign on a billboard or in a magazine. Some more and more of these messages are illuminated for you to take action on that weren't illuminated before. Since you've programmed yourself every morning, 20, 25 minutes um, with your goals, then you'll have more of that show up in your life. So after you write down your goals as though they're already complete with gratitude, read them out loud and then sit quietly for just, just a few minutes and think about yourself in the movie of one of your completed goals. See yourself getting that bonus check at work. See yourself in that beautiful dress or those that wonderful new outfit because you're in this healthy, uh, physically fit, trim body that's whole and complete 
you know, and, and you feel just every cell is operating in exactly the way that it was perfectly designed. See yourself in those harmonious relationships with your family, sitting around a table laughing and having a great time. See yourself having that great vacation, that new car, that wonderful, beautiful home to share your life with. If you do that every single morning, every single morning, your subconscious and your intuition are going to illuminate more possibilities for you to have what it is that you want. Well, and you become an active player in the in your responsibility for your life. You actually take it by the horns and, and you you program it. You you ride it. You take it forward. Mm -hmm. And that's when you start creating all these synchronistic events that May's mm -hmm. talking about here. It's not that they're not already happening. It's just that now you're noticing them. And that's the flow we're talking about here. I believe you're talking about too, May, when you talk mm -hmm. about just pulling all these pieces together and stepping aside and letting them happen because you program yourself in the morning, then you go about your day. Yeah, the, the cool thing, um, one of my very favorite teachers is a woman, her name was Florence Scoble I, Shin. Yes. And when I was 18 years old, my mother, who was a devout Catholic, who had converted from Seventh-day Adventist, mm gave me my first metaphysical book and it was written by Florence Scoble Shin and it was called The Game of Life. I and have how to that play on it. my shelf, you guys. Yes. It's a great it's book. A <laughs> teeny little book. Yeah. Very cool book. And I took that book off to college and thought I had a secret. I had this miracle making formula to be able to manifest whatever I want. And and much of what I've described is what she's talking about. I just put it into a little easier to understand formula. And, and easier to implement formula, but she had something very clever to say. And I've proved this over 36 years of, of uh, working in the business world. She said that if, if, if you don't program your own subconscious, others mm -hmm. will program mm -hmm. it for you. And you'll start to notice what they think is important rather than what you think is important, okay? So if you wake up, and you grab your mobile device and you start looking at what the world oh. thinks is important, then that's what your subconscious is going to notice all day long, is more of that. Why not use this fact that whatever you put your attention on, you start to see and notice more possibilities for it manifesting in your life. If we know that's true, and lots of science studies have shown in lots of different studies with groups, that that is true. Why not use that to program your own success before you get your day started, before you pick up your mobile device, mm -hmm. before you check social media? Program what's important to you, which is the wonderful life that you want to live. That's very well said. I want to highlight that. What she just said, it's super important to program yourself so you don't follow the programs of others. So a lot of people like to meditate, and you can put your meditation into that, as she mentioned. But she's talking about only a 25-minute, 30-minute process, so you may add a little bit more for your meditation. Really, if you could get into even 10 minutes, 15 minutes of silence to yourself and then go into a process, that, that it puts it all together for you. You can do it all in the morning and you're going to feel that much more energized for it and that you you have a control or responsibility for your life. Now you're starting to be more independent with your life and not just a pawn in the world. Um, I think that it's so brilliantly said and I'm glad you brought that up. And by the way, you guys, this is in her books. This is what she's all about, teaching people and not just teaching individuals but also teaching major corporations companies how to do these principles. You see, she's got the beauty of business with spirituality. These two can coexist wonderfully, yeah. and they need to coexist, as she's telling us here so eloquently. For another well, key. That brings up a good, a good point. Um, to get to your intuition, you have to, if you get this insight or this hunch or this in, inner guidance we're talking about, or it could be higher self, inner wisdom, greater self, it comes to you and it says, hey, take the lead there, call that person, go this direction, but you don't want to listen to it or even trust it yeah how do you get yeah. beyond that well the first thing you do is just if you're not sure just simply say hey higher presence inner self whatever you call it i need another lead like, for instance, <laughs> perfect like, let me give you an example i have a friend of mine um she was in her mid-50s when she took a workshop from me 
And she said that one of her goals was to have a sound retirement plan. Mm -hmm. She didn't even have a savings account. She had nothing, okay? (laughs) She's living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. And so she wanted a sound retirement plan. And every day she's writing down that she already has a sound retirement plan that easily cares for her in her retirement uh, with all of the money that she needs to live a happy and secure life. You know, she's using the daily practice that I write about in my book. And she gets a strong thought of this woman that she hadn't thought of in like 15 years. And she couldn't remember how that relationship ended. Like, did she do something? Was there a falling out? And she was really nervous about con- trying to track this woman down. So she said, hey, CSO, I need another lead. Well, she did that about 30 times. Oh, my goodness. Hey, I need another lead. I need another lead. What she's not allowed to do is nothing. Oh. So she can ask for as many leads as she wants. And finally, after about the 30th time that this woman kept coming to mind over a course of you know a period of time, she just finally surrendered and she gave up. And she said, okay, fine, I'll track her down. Well, she tracked her down and the woman was really happy to hear from her and they struck up this conversation. It was really pleasant. And finally, before the end of the conversation, the woman asked my friend, what prompted you to call me? And she said, well, I'm doing this new prosperity practice and one of the things it teaches us is to pay attention to intuition and you kept coming to mind, so I called you. And she said, well, tell me more about the practice. And so my friend said, well, we established goals and here's here's how it works. And so the woman said, well, what's one of your goals? And so my friend said, you know, our sound retirement practice plan. The woman said, you're kidding me. Uh I just put a group of women together that are all from finance. And we meet once a month and we talk about finance. We have some wine and some snacks. And we even pool a little tiny bit of money together and invest oh. as a little group. And would you like to join our group? Well, my friend contacted me, you know, quite a while later just to give me a report. She said that she joined the group. She met women she would have never met before. She got a whole new mental equivalent of what wealth was about. And these women gave her thousands and thousands of dollars worth of free advice on how to put together a retirement plan, even on the income that she had coming in. And because she's meeting them and learning more, she's starting to think, wow, if they could do it, I could do it. So she now is working to get an even greater job with more pay. And she's got all these new friends as a result. That's how this practice works. Wow, it's just really about trusting those leads you get once again, going back into your gut, your intuition, your abilities to know something's right to do and just go for it and follow it. Yeah. And and if you don't, just ask for another lead. What you're not that. allowed to do anymore is nothing. I love that. I think that's a part that I don't hear a lot of people say, you haven't you can't do nothing. You have to do something. If that something is just asking again for another sign or what to do, I think that's brilliant. Um I got to that, that, that I got to tell you guys this is what I use in my life too. These ideas if I go after something, I'm going to follow all those hunches, all that insight, all the wisdom I receive from the higher self, the spirit guides and all this stuff I work with. I'm going to follow that and it takes me in some brilliant places and um, I know many of you out there who watch this show, you too are following some of those hunches. And so this is taking it a bit deeper and realizing that you have the right to have a prosperous and abundant life. Let's talk about that. That's a that's a spiritual principle. Um, I've had people say, if you do something that's helpful to people, you should do it for free. You shouldn't get paid. If you're a spiritual person, you shouldn't get paid. You should give your stuff away for free. And I, I and I don't agree with that. But let's talk about this because it sounds like you're the alignment you have with what your passion is is very deeply spiritual on many levels. And so, how do you see that as okay for that to be your right? and to also receive money for that. Well, I'm a huge believer in the law of circulation. Me too. I'm a, I'm a huge believer in the law. Of, it's sometimes called the law of giving and receiving. Mm-hmm. Catherine Ponder calls it the law of increase. And if you give, 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 and don't expect to also receive, 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 you're crimping the hose of prosperity in your yes. life and also in other people's lives. And some of the hardest things for people to learn is gracious receiving. 
If you are a giver, that probably comes very easy to you. And then when somebody tries to gift you something, oh, no, 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 right. I, I couldn't accept it. Oh, I, no, no, I couldn't possibly accept that. You know what you're doing? You're doing a disservice to that other person. You're crimping their prosperity hose by not allowing them to give. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Stop it. <laughs> Stop Be it, you guys. Receiver. Stop it. <laughs> right. Be a gracious receiver. And so I want all of your viewers to repeat after me. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Say it. Thank you. Thank you. When somebody comes up to you and wants to give you something, just bite the inside of your lip and say, (laughs) thank you. That's right. All right. And that will allow this wonderful balancing and circulation. It's a law. It's a law Mm. of circulation. It will allow it to flow, flow freely. And if you take a look, if you do any studying at all in terms of sacred texts like the Torah or the Quran or the Bible, you know, those sacred ancient texts, all of them, all of them say that being wealthy, meaning, you know, not just financially wealthy, but wealthy is being whole and complete, lacking nothing in every area of your life. But let's just talk for a moment about the finances as part of being wealthy. To be really financially abundant is a virtue because of the good work that you can do with it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do more, you've got to receive more to allow it to flow through you and activate this law of circulation. So when you give of your time and talents and treasures freely, that's marvelous. You'll probably get people giving you time and talents and treasures as well. Whatever it is that you want more of in your life, start giving it first, but also be a gracious receiver. If you want more time, go find one person, one person, that's as busy as you are, maybe even busier, and and offer to pick up their groceries when you're at the grocery store or take their dog for a walk. Give them 20 minutes. I can guarantee you the next time you have 10 minutes to get to an appointment that's 20 minutes away, yeah. you're somehow magically going to get there on time. Oh, it, ha- it. it happens to me all the time because I give time. You give time. I want to I wanna receive time. Right. Oh, if you wonderful. want uh, appreciation, give more appreciation. I have a friend of mine that's an accounting manager, and she told me she was going to quit her job. Mm. She didn't feel appreciated. She was going to quit. And I said, don't do that yet. You know, use your daily practice to describe the job that you want and with gratitude as though it's already complete. But find one person, one person each day that you could tell how much you appreciate them. You know, whether you call them, right. whether you email them, whether you text them, whether you tell them in person, one person a day, tell them how much you appreciate them. So she did that for a period of time. One day her assistant comes into her office and says it's time to go to a meeting. And so she comes out of her office and she has this this staff that works in those modular offices yeah. right outside of hers, okay? Little cubicles. So she, yeah, cubes, yeah. yeah. So she comes out of her office and from down the hallway she sees an executive vice president of the company walking towards her. He drops to his knees in front of her and starts flailing his arms in homage and says, oh my God, I so appreciate you and your staff. Now all of her employees, their heads pop up over the cubes and they're watching this. And he says, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. Oh, you are so amazing. You caught an error that could have cost the company thousands and thousands of dollars. I am so grateful. And he even arranged to give them all bonuses. You know what? She didn't quit her job. She kept her job because she felt appreciated. So whatever you feel you're lacking, if you're lacking love, give love. You feel you're lacking appreciation, you're lacking health, invite somebody to take a walk. Invite somebody over for a healthy dinner. Give health. If you want more time, give time. If you want more money, give more money. Wherever you're spiritually fed and you will receive in return. 
It happens these, every time. I call that spiritual principles that you wrap it in, in all aspects of your life, as you're talking about here, not just business, but all aspects of your life. Yeah. Well, we did the same thing. I can't tell you. Our, what I had my employees actually printed it on business cards for them. And it said that we are an extraordinary company that works towards the success of our customers, our coworkers, our suppliers and vendors in our world, and we are successful in return. That's on everybody's job description, that that's what they are to do, is to work towards the success of others. And we were in a meeting, and all of my employees knew that that was their job. Now they had different tasks sure. and different skills and talents. And so we're in a meeting, and, and some of our developers and technical staff that don't get out of the office much um, were asked to introduce themselves and to say what their job is. And our lead developer was, didn't understand what the question was. He said, well, do you want to know my job or do you want to know my task, my, my talent, my <laughs> skills? And this um, a customer said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, my job is to work towards the success of my coworkers, my customers, my suppliers and vendors in our world. And if I do that, you know, we'll be successful in return. But my, my, my talent, my skill is that I'm the lead software design engineer. <laughs> well, and then it went around the room. And after the meeting, when, well, when it finally came to me, I said, um, my job is the same. But my skill and talent is to support all of the team that's here from our company to help to serve you better. Well, after the meeting, this guy comes up and introduces himself, and he's the chief financial officer of the potential customer. And he said, you know, in all my years of work, I never had any company come in here where all the employees knew that their job was to be of service to us. He says, that's so impressive, and if we can figure out a way to work together, I want to do it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So you give success to your customers, you receive success. You give appreciation to customers, yeah. Yeah. you receive appreciation. You give excellence in the job that you're working in now, you will receive excellence in return. It's so true. I'm thinking, uh, there's one thing I do, I'll share with the audience here, is um, I have this little notebook. It's probably no bigger than this. And it's, I don't know, about this thick maybe, but it's called my appreciation journal. So when I find that I'm in a situation I'm just not quite liking, <laughs> whether it, well, I work for myself, but whether it's a client or whether it's something that's going on in my life or this struggle or whatever, I will take that situation and write down, and I suggest you guys try it too, write down the name of the person or the situation, say what I do appreciate about that situation or person, and not what I don't like. I already know what I don't like because I say it in my head, you know. So I'm going to say, I appreciate this about this person. I appreciate the fact that they are very kind to animals. I appreciate the fact that they say hello every morning. I, and I go, well, but this, no, nope, nope, I appreciate. And then you find it changing internally. And then you find you're able to say it. And it becomes it. It's a my magic little book. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, and yeah. one of the keys that you pointed out, in, and, and this is something I get lots and lots of comments on. I mean, I, I, I offer a free one-hour call every month, oh. well, every other month. And so people call in from all over the world and ask questions and, and, um, and get help in creating goal attainment statements that are right for themselves. And one, it, it, there's always at least one person that calls in, and, and when I ask them, well, what's your goal? They'll say, I don't want to be mistreated at work, or I don't, I don't want to have conflict mm -hmm. with my spouse, or I don't want my neighbor to be such a pain in the butt. <laughs> and unfortunately, our subconscious doesn't understand don't want. Mm -hmm. So all it sees is that you're having conflict at work, you're having uh, your neighbors being a pain in the butt, and it makes a mental picture of that situation. Guess what? It will illuminate possibilities for you to achieve more of that. So you've got to shift your words. And the fact mm -hmm. that you're shifting your words into appreciation um, is incredibly valuable. And people need to shift their words. What they want is a harmonious relationship with their neighbor. Yes. What they want is um, an easy and mutually respectful and mutually valuable relationship with their boss. So describe what you want as though it's already complete, not what you don't want. And this could be part of your early morning 25-minute practice? Yeah. 
In the gratitude formula, I do outline um, exercises that show you how to create powerful goal statements. And then, like I said, on that free call, I allow people to bring what they want to the call and then I'll help them craft that goal attainment statement. Well, now, May, you talk a lot about gratitude, which we've been talking a lot about here, but you also talk about forgiveness. Yeah. What is the role in forgiveness in this whole system, systematic approach or formula? Well, I'll give you an analogy. Okay, see this bottle right here? Mm -hmm. If this bottle is filled up to the brim, can you fit any more water in it? No. No. It's filled. Well, the same is true for you or for anybody that's watching this this uh, presentation, this uh, show. If you're filled up to the brim, you can't fit any more good things inside. So what we have to do is remove the stuff that's not <laughs> serving. And we'll put it over here on the side. You could still own that pile. That's just fine. But we want to remove it put it over here on the side so that you now have more room to receive the good things that you want, that you're describing in your daily practice, right? And the way that you do that is right before you go to sleep, you just, be, you know, maybe right after you turn the light off and you're ready and you're cozy in bed and ready to go to sleep, you think of three things that you're grateful for that happened during the day. I'm so grateful that I got parking spaces in front so I didn't have to get wet in the Seattle <laughs> I'm so grateful that I got a chance to hang out with Karen on her show today. I'm so grateful that I got an opportunity to um, go enjoy my neighbors for a nice dinner. Okay, so whatever you're grateful for that happened during the day, you don't have to look at any notes, but think of three things. Then use a giving forth, a giving forth practice to remove anything that's taking up room that's not serving you so that you have room to receive what you want. And I, I have this outline in my books, but it goes something like this. CSO, if there's anything from my past or present that I need to forgive, whether I remember it or not, I now do so. I love them, I bless them, I forgive them, I release them into your care, and we all go free. If there's anyone from my past or present, including myself, that needs to forgive me, they now do so. And we are all free to experience our higher and greater good always. Good night, and then just go to sleep. Now, lots of studies have shown that if you use gratitude statements right before you go to sleep, you sleep better. Yeah. And if you're removing what's not serving you, you've got more room to receive good. And I tell you, this is not condoning right. what others have done in right. the past. All right, there, there are some incredibly painful situations yeah. and, and really unjust situations that have happened in our past. This is not condoning that behavior. What this is doing is allowing people to make room to receive what they do want. And I have so many people that contact me after using this practice for a while. This is step seven in the path to wealth. But when they use this practice, what they find is that pile that's over here, they still own that. And they, if something in there needs attention, your CSO, your source of intelligence, your creative, all-knowing power of the universe will tell you to pay attention to that. But for right now, it's over here on the side. And as you start to fill up with more of the things that are in alignment with the life that you really want to create yeah. and love, much of that pile just sort of disintegrates on its own because you've starved it from any attention. That's great. And it, it just withers and dies. So this practice is a goal attainment practice, not a, a, um, a true forgiveness practice. This right. is just to take, just to make room within you to receive more of what you want. And if you do need to do some deeper forgiveness work, there are so many great techniques out there. Yes. Um, all we want to do is get you to a calm place. And, and let me give you an example. Can you remember the last time you were really upset or worried or angry about something? Oh, I sure can. 
Okay, if I came up to you at that time, right when you're in the midst of this worrisome mm -hmm. situation, could we have a conversation? It would be a little difficult. I'd probably say, yeah, not right now. Take exactly. a number, and let's talk later. <laughs> exactly, because you're all consumed yeah. with this. Well, guess what? If you can't talk to me and I speak out loud, audibly, then you can't notice those intuitive leads either. That's right. So we have to get keep ourselves at a calm level. And if we ever find ourselves in the middle of the day having this worrisome or angry thing, you can use a little mantra that's also outlined in my book. I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. I bless you, I forgive you, I release you. And if you say that over and over, you might need to do it about 5,000 times the first day. <laughs> sure. <laughs> but, but the second day, you only need to do it 4,990. And the next day, it'll be less. And the next day, it'll be less. And over a period of time, you'll find that you don't think of that person or that situation anymore. Right. And they have safe passage through your brain when you do think of them. You don't, you don't get emotionally riled up at all. And you're in a calm place so those intuitive messages can be recognized. That, that, that's great. Uh, for, forgiveness is for ourselves. It's really to empower you and to not take away energy from yourself. So it, it's, it goes, it can go, what she's talking about with the business principles and your goal principles can go a very long way with your own therapeutic and healing principles too. So I'm so glad we, we talked about that here. And I like the way you addressed it in ways to work with it. So we've come to the place in the show, May, where I'd really ask you, I mean, you've already shared a lot of inspiration, but what would be maybe a gem that you would like to give to everybody that they can take away today and use to start loving their life and being passionate about it? Okay, so first of all, whatever they describe as success, you know, it, it, it can be whatever in any part of their life. It could be health, it could be relationships, it could be work, it could be finances, it could be recreation, or even a deeper spiritual connection, whatever your, your success definition is. I want you to know that success is not a secret reserved for only a few. Success is simply a system. You've already proved learning to ride a bike, learning to drive a car, learning to type on a keyboard, learning to read, You've used repetitive systems to achieve success and master situation. Like you probably can drive home from work now and not remember large parts of your right. drive home. You've mastered that situation. You can master achieving any goals that you want by incorporating this system for success. It's not reserved for only a few. You can achieve whatever you decide and create the life that you love. Oh, thank you, thank you. So what's coming up for you? What, what's on the horizon for May? You know, I actually was asked by Unity Radio. You know, there's uh, Hay House Radio yeah. and Unity Radio and whatnot, and they contacted me and asked me if I would host a weekly show. Fantastic. So we have in Abundance Incorporated with May McCarthy starting soon. And uh, I'm very excited about that. So we're going to go over a lot of these kinds of success principles. I am booked out to next April. Oh, I saw that. Different different uh, events and retreats and speaking engagements and, and lots of stuff. And, and my publisher has uh, had me record um, some online classes uh, through Hierophant Publishing and Insight USA oh, events. Yeah. So if people can't attend an event and they want to really, you know, roll up their sleeves and get into a workshop setting, they can now do it virtually and, and online. So I'm excited about that. All that information is on my website at maymccarthy.com. And also for your listeners and your uh, viewers, mm -hmm. if they want to check out um, both of my books, I have posted the first few chapters of each book for free. So they can download those and, and see what they think. And I do a test drive before they uh, do anything about purchasing. That's very generous That's of you. Do they have to, do they go to your website or do they go to your Facebook page in order to do that? Uh, they go to my website. That's okay. maymccarthy.com. And then also they can certainly follow me on social media and I post everything and ev <laughs> anything and everything that I and other people that I think are doing some really great work in the world um, have a, 
I have coming up. That's great. Um, so you guys, all the links are below that we talked about in the show. And be sure to check out our website. Um, you know, it, it's just amazing. It's got a wealth of information. And again, she is speaking all over the place. It took several months for me to get her on my show. So she's a busy lady. So I want to thank you so much, May, for coming here and joining the audience here today. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. It was a great, great pleasure. It was my joy, and, and you're very welcome. So there you have everybody. Here is a person who's pushing her own boundaries with her passion, loving life, and how to do this with graciousness, incorporating gratitude as a daily practice in the morning in her life to have the success, the abundance, the prosperity that she wants in her life. And now she's sharing this out there with everybody else so you too can have the same kind of success. So get out there now and explore the world and allow yourself to be the best that you can be by being gracious. I thank you for joining me here. This is Creative Visions TV. I'm Karen Dahlman. And until next time, I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.